Look at that. Got him. <laughs> Man, he didn't exactly smack it. Oh yeah, but it's good eye. Look at that. That's one of the neat things about fishing in water that we're fishing. I'm fishing really shallow water. It's first ice. And you know, when you come out on this first ice, a lot of times you can catch these walleyes when they're up in four or five, six feet of water. And that eye right there, man, I'll tell you what, I watched him come in and I watched him kind of just look at it. I was banging that Wally talker around trying to get his attention and I watched him come in and I've had a few fish come and go that I haven't gotten. It was almost getting a little frustrating. So all I did is lift that thing up and almost held it still. And he didn't just smack it. It wasn't that bam. It was just, he grabbed it and pulled it back down. And I'll tell you why that is. A lot of times on this first ice, these fish can be a little bit lethargic. And there's a few reasons for it, but there's ways around it. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is how do we make fish bite when they're in that lethargic mood right on first ice? Because we're all excited to get out there. We just gotta figure out how to make them bite. That's a great way to start. I'm gonna get back down there because where there's one, there's usually another two, three, maybe four more. A lot of times on first ice, the biggest challenge is that the wind has been blowing right when the lake capped up. I mean, so often we get that first big cold front that caps the lake up. Here's what, here's what was happening though. We had that big north wind blowing as well. So it churns these bodies of water up. You know, you look at the lake we're on today right now, this water is really dirty. And that's part of the reason I'm fishing shallow because being up shallow gives me the best chance of a fish being able to see it. There's more light shallow. The deeper and deeper and deeper you go, the darker it's gonna be because everything's so churned up. But there's two things I look at that make a huge, huge difference in this situation. One is noise and the other one is color and flash. And what I've started with today is I started with a Wally Talker because I'm trying the noise thing first. I'm trying to get their attention based on the fact that they don't see real well. There's one, got them. They don't see real well. That one just smoked it while I was sitting there. I had quit paying attention to the graph just to talk to the camera. And I'll tell you what, this guy just came in and railed it. But this is an example of the noise that I'm talking about. This Wally Talker with these glass beads and brass discs, it gives off this high pitch clicking sound. And what happens is fish from all over around me are gonna hear that and they're gonna come to that. And as soon as they get here, then when I see them on the screen, I can just slow it down because I know now they can see it, but I'm bringing them to me with a bait that's making noise. So remember that in muddy water, you've got two options. You got bright colors and flash or you got noise. And I chose noise to start with and we're off to a pretty good start. But let me tell you something. If I ran into a situation where I couldn't make those fish bite when they came in, this is why I've got this rod laying here. This is a quiver spoon. It's just a slow drop spoon that when those fish come in, if they won't bite, I might make a quick change to this because I know now they can see it and that quiver spoon is going to give this unique action where it looks like a dying bait fish. Flash, color, flash, color. So all said and done, I'm covering both ends of the spectrum, but I like to start with noise when I'm on dirty water because it just brings fish in. Oh yeah, it feels like another one. Same, same size fish. There are just piles of them on the spot. Yep, look at that. Another great eater size walleye. You know what's really cool about early ice is I think this to me is the easiest time to locate fish. Now granted, you have, you have your issues with sometimes dirty water and, and some of the different things that go along with that first ice, those doldrums we've talked about. But you know what you do get that's on your side? Fish are pretty doggone predictable as far as where they're gonna be. Because I'm sitting in the shallowest water I'm gonna fish all winter. And walleye's like that one right there. He's cruising these areas and all I gotta do is find structure areas or drop offs, old weed lines. But it's really easy to find these areas that the fish are gonna be in 
because it's so much more concentrated. As winter wears on, these fish are all gonna move and they're gonna be all over the lake. You'll still have some in here, you'll still have some out deep. They'll use the whole water column, but when they're in here shallower, they're usually working that bottom area, so you don't gonna worry about that whole water column. Say you're in 30 feet of water and you're worried about are there fish in 15 feet down, 20 feet down. Here, when you're fishing this eight feet, nine feet or less like we're fishing today, those fish, they're cruising right along the bottom. You can see them, they're real easy, and these fish are predictable. This rock pile we're sitting on, I've just got an area around here. I'm right out off the edge, and right back up here. It's just a rock pile that comes up. It's a spine that runs along, and that's why I've got these holes drilled right along the edge. It's a pretty simple deal. You can just look for these structure areas in shallow water, and you can bank on walleyes being there early in the season. Let's get right back down there, because you know how this works. One of the things that happens quite often when you're in these situations is these fish they'll come through in packs and you might sit for an hour a half hour a couple hours sometimes but when they come through they're on their way to eat or they're on their way back from eating out to that deeper stuff so the bottom line is usually when they come through you can bank on the fact there's more than just one of them Got him. Ooh, that one feels like a little bit better one. He pulled that drag. Oh, geez. Come on, hook right there. Look at that. Man, every now and then you get lucky. You get some cold hands, but you get lucky. What a great eye to wrap up the night. I'll tell you, this is the kind of bite that we all get excited about. I'm going to let that guy go. But this is that. This is that kind of bite that we all get excited about. First ice. And it can get a little tricky sometimes with all the things that are changing in a walleye's world, but let me tell you something. You just put a few of the things together that we did today. You know, fish with baits that make a little bit of noise. Fish with colors that are bright, and then work these areas that are high percentage areas. Don't worry yet about that deep stuff. You might hear a few of those rumors, but let me tell you, the easiest fishing is in on some of these structures, and a lot of times you can have it all to yourselves, because a lot of times people don't think about walleyes being this shallow, but early ice, pretty commonplace for him to be. Get out on the ice and try some of this. I'll tell you what, it's just a ball early in the season. Mm -hmm.